Hello again YouTube, this is now a much more polite video to Andy. Um, if you haven't seen the first video, which um, was my first ponage video, uh, I'll link to that below. Uh, also a link below will be a study um, which he cited in a discussion we had. And um, I just want to say first off, uh, Andy apologised. There's no bad beef between us. Um, he was very graceful in apology. So. It's all settled, and I'm just going to explain to him my take on um, the document, which is linked below, and um, why it doesn't say what he thought it said and what he was told it said, which was that um, the poorest in the UK live longer than the richest in the US because of the NHS. Um, it's a very good study that I can see. Um, I haven't gone on Web of Science or anything like that and checked how many times it's been cited but I think it has a lot of relevance to the discussion about NHS's. Um, we originally started discussing it in um, one of Happy Cabby's vids on um, the unconstitutional nature of Obamacare. And um, yeah, I think this has a lot of relevance for that. Um, the important thing is uh, he highlighted a paragraph, but it's more visible on the third page, page 2039, if you want to go check it out yourself. Table 1, there's a graph uh, which mentions diabetes and hypertension, um, both of which are lower in the UK low-income section than they are in the United States high-income section. And you could use to argue this, that the low people in the UK are healthier and therefore going to live longer. Except unfortunately, just below that, as I pointed out a little quickly, I suppose, in my first video, um, below that, all heart disease, myocardial infarctions, strokes, and lung disease are all higher in the England low-income population than the United States high population. Quite a significant amount higher for myocardial infarctions, strokes, and lung disease, all of which are very high fatality diseases. Um, although, of course, this isn't a study of deaths or anything like that. It, it's um, a study of self-reported health. So these are all people who've managed to survive. Um, but yeah, the incidence of disease is much higher in the and much more serious diseases in the low-income English section. Um, and this matches other trends that we see across countries. The lower your income is, the more likely you are to get ill. Rich people are generally healthier. They can afford to eat better now, is certainly the case. Um, they have less stresses on them if they've got money. Although not everyone, it, it's an averages thing. But um, I certainly don't think that from this study you can argue that rich people in America are worse off than poor people in the UK. Particularly as rich people in America are the ones who have all the healthcare and insurance and so forth. Uh, although this study does actually say that even amongst their low population, uh, low income population of the United States, um, less than 6.5%, I think, or so. I've got the study here, I should check, but it's just stuff that I haven't heard. Uh, a very small amount were not um, insured in some way or another. Um, how good that is, I have no idea. I'm not a doctor or a great expert on this. Um, the, I then looked up um, the other thing I would challenge him on is um, the use of the term poorest and richest, because the study divides it up into thirds, low, medium, and high. So you've got low income, medium income, high income. I wouldn't describe low income people as the lowest. I myself would probably be in the low income bracket right now, um, probably for quite some time to come, the way student fees are going, but um, I'm certainly not one of the poorest and I'm not from a poor background, which also has a, a major effect on it. Um, places, if you search for the poorest places in the UK, one of the places that shows up is a borough in Glasgow. And um, it's famous for having a very low life expectancy. So uh, they're one of the top 10 poorest places in the UK, and life expectancy is 54, compared to the UK average life expectancy of 75.9, and that's both for men. For women, it's quite significantly higher. Um, I, in a quick five minute search, I wasn't able to find a, a good statistic um, for the USA's richest people's lifespan. 
that simply the average lifespan of people in the USA, 75.6, is much higher than that of the poorest, in at least one definition and usage of the word poorest, much higher. So, um, unfortunately, there's a habit, and I know I do this, everyone does it, I think, of taking some information that fits our arguments and then not questioning it. And if it didn't fit our arguments, we'd delve into it, look it up, find out the problems with it. And of course, the problem with doing this is that when you use it against someone and it doesn't fit their argument, they will go do the checking. So you have to check your stuff first or you will look silly. Me and Andy actually agree on quite a lot of things I would expect about the NHS. Um, we, we may not have similar political things at all, but we, like, we're not opposite sides of the health insurance versus private versus a state option. We're not on opposite sides of that. I was, but in checking statistics, I riled him a little. I walked around the bridge. The, the important thing is, if you're going to be a skeptic and a free thinker and, and try and improve your mind in that way, you have to be prepared to take other people ripping on your ideas um, and, and other people challenging and um, being sceptical towards what you say. And it's a good thing, because the more you're challenged by people who agree with you, they'll be able to help you find stuff that is true, hopefully. I mean, I don't want people just to go around agreeing with each other all the time and only talking to the people who agree with them. But um, challenge your own beliefs within your own group. You'll make your own arguments stronger when f facing someone with a different point of view, a different argument. Um, and I think it's a real advantage. Um, the other thing is, uh, I wanted to talk just briefly, uh, he, he asked me to refute his facts. Um, I didn't present any facts or refute any of his facts. I, I disputed interpretation. And usually in science, that's what you're disputing. You, you do an experiment, unless you think there's something unsound with the experiment, you have results from that experiment. And then you argue over what it means, because... Um, very few experiments are, are sort of directly observational things, that they're, they're indirect observation or um, change something, see how it changes, try and work out what's happening in process, stuff like that. You have to be sceptical, you have to challenge each other's ideas all the time, and the facts generally won't change. You may get more facts or later facts, uh, in this case the more facts I was using was the rest of the table, um, but you rarely do you negate an already established fact? Um, you argue about interpretation. Um, in fact, the only people who really argue and ignore facts are creationists that I've come across. And um, you, really, we're, we're so much better than that. We should be able to challenge each other, dispute each other, and um, That, that's about it. I'm just going to start rambling now. Thanks very much, YouTube. I apologise for a longer nod than normal video. Bye.